Welcome to Find Your Outdoors. I'm your host, Frank Willem. Trout are one of the most sought after game fish in the world, and it's no wonder why. They're delicious to eat and often challenging to catch. The first historical record of trout fishing dates back to 200 AD when an ancient Roman author wrote about fishermen using flies to catch trout on a river in Macedonia. Nearly two millennia later, anglers are still using similar methods to catch this fascinating fish. Recently, our team caught up with Captain Alan Patrick with Chasing Dots Fishing Charters out of Ocean Springs, Mississippi for a day on the Gulf Coast Barrier Islands. Let's catch up with Brittany and Captain Allen to see if they can find their trout. Captain Allen with Chasing Dots LLC Charters. We operate out of Ocean Springs, Mississippi, from really Grand Bay, Alabama to almost Venice. I fish wherever the fish are. We take charters everywhere. We uh, speckle trout, redfish, flounder, pompano, cobia. If it swims, we fish for it. We don't target certain species of fish till certain times of the year. We pretty much chase fish, whatever's biting, whatever's out there is what we're going for. We specialize in just fishing. We want people to have a good time. We've got a lot of people who call their personal best fish. That's what I really makes me happy. We might not catch a ton of them, but I'd rather see somebody catch a good quality fish than 40 barely keepers. I was excited for a nice relaxing day of fishing. There's nothing better than kicking back on the boat and watching the sunrise. But Cap Mallon, well, he had other plans. Fishing out of the boat is more intimate than fishing in a boat. When you're in the water, you're feeling the water, you're seeing the fish, you're watching everything react, you're in the element. Anybody can sit in a boat and ride around, find some fish, but getting out of the boat, is, plus you catch a lot more quality fish when you get out of a boat. Nature can happen around you because you're not obstructing it with boats and GPSs and power poles and whatnot. I have all that, but we use it to fight the elements. Most of the time your morning bite's gonna be your best bite with any fish, but most of the time, especially this time of year, the morning is the, it's just serene. You get to watch the sun come up, greatest show on earth, it's free, all you gotta do is get up and watch it. The water's normally slick, bugs won't mess with you for the first little while, and normally your bigger fish are gonna be caught at night or the first few hours of daylight. Occasionally you'll catch a few during the day, but most of the time that first hour and a half when I still call the waters black, they can see but I can't see is why I call it black, is when we catch them. All right, oh no. All right, first trout of the morning. We could say in the boat, but we're technically in the water, so. In the water. <laughs> when we first got there, we're looking for black spots, which were hard to see because the way we start fishing, with the wind and tide, we had to fish looking into the sun, which makes it hard. Sometimes you don't see the grass beds till you're standing in them. But you look for the black spots, and once you find the black spots and the sun comes up, and sometimes you have to back off of them, or you might be standing in the middle of them and just 360 cast all the way around you. The trout are either gonna run through the spots, or they're gonna sit in it. Today, we found a few that was running around, and we found some that were literally dead stick fish. She threw out twice, I think, and I threw out once, didn't even move the lure, just let it float down the bottom. Bang, fish. Well, it turns out we're having a pretty successful morning so far. Captain Allen said he knew where to find the fish and so far he hasn't disappointed. It seemed like every time the lures hit the water, we got a bite. Looks like it's gonna be a great day.
everything's starting to come alive. Water temperature's starting to creep towards 70 and stay at 70. We're starting to get warmer days, a little warmer nights. When that happens, all your rows starting to get small fish are starting to get a little bigger. They're getting big enough that other fish can see them, they eat them. It's just small fish, big fish, big fish. The pyramid scheme of fish. But the grass is growing thicker. Everything just comes alive. It's just an estuary. If you ever get a chance to go out there, absolutely amazing. The baits we use today were Paul Brown lures. It's my favorite bait to use. It seems to catch a lot of bigger fish. They're uh, basically nothing but a soft plastic with some tied wire inside of them. It used to be made by an old man in Texas in his garage and they were bought out by Miralure. Miralure now sells them, produces them mass. They're a, they're a soft plastic, so they suspend in the water pretty well. Most of them sink about a foot, second, second and a half. I use different kind of retrieves. Today, we started off with a three twitch poles, and I moved into just constant twitching, and I moved into long twitches and stops, and there at the end, I literally just told Brittany, we were having luck on casting it out, switch it, and let it just go to the bottom, sit there. And it worked this morning. Captain Allen and I were having no problem bringing in the fish. It wasn't long before we had a basket full of them. But the funny thing about catching loads of big fish while standing waist deep in water that's full of aquatic life, well, sometimes you attract the wrong type of company. I got ready to come in and couldn't do nothing. I, I, I just laughed because when I grabbed the box, it just, it was, it was empty. A little bonnet head to come up here and chewed a little bitty hole in it and chewed one of the fish and all the fish were just sitting there real still and they're like, all right, we're out of here. <laughs> I think I got another catfish. Well, I'll send that. There it was, it just caught ninth here. Oh, y'all back up. It's a shark, we got my, my feet. Brittany and I had found fish. There's a deep hole we were close to. I call it deep hole. It's just deeper than what we're, everything else there. We found some fish. I had made a long cast, hooked the fish to the very end of the long cast, started bringing it in and it got about 20 yards from me and there was a, it came to the surface, rolled up. I said, it's gotta be a trout, looks like a trout. And then within a second, there was a black torpedo about six foot long in front of us with my fish in his mouth, which he did. But in that moment is when we did the Heisman shark back up. <laughs> oh, y'all back up. What is it? And I picked the fish basket up. We didn't keep any more fish in the basket after that. They all went back to the boat and we let most of them go the early morning. Oh, there's that shark. Oh, it scared the out of me. As if I hadn't already had enough when this huge black tip shark swam right into my space. I turned to see Captain Allen with his basket of fish in the air talking about, I'll be right back. No way. I'm right behind you, Captain. What they do is they run through the grass beds terrorizing fish to the point where either they're going to chase them and try to eat them or the fish are literally just try to lay down in the grass and hide from them. And when they do that, you could throw a cast net over them. It's about the only way you're going to catch the fish because they're not going to do nothing. So it turns out two large black tip sharks had made their way into our fishing party and were steadily cutting through the various schools of fish encircling us. Needless to say, I wasn't getting back in the water. So Captain Allen and I headed out to deeper water to jig for some big cobia. It 
it wasn't long before he had what seemed to be a big one in his sights. And you know, the standard thing people do is they pull up to a buoy or a wreck or a platform like we did. They drop straight down, they jig up, and they try to get something to come up. With an eel or the smaller plastic fish baits, they're, they're not gonna sink. It was very odd that the one came up the way he did and just left. Normally they'll come up and they'll miss the way he did and they'll turn around like, where'd it go? We didn't have that opportunity. He came up, blew up on it, six foot from the boat and was gone. Well, after a successful morning of wade fishing and a not so successful time cobia fishing, we decided to head back toward home, but not before taking a stop at the rocks in Pascagoula to fish for some rat reds. Pascagoula is blessed. The Pascagoula area is blessed. We have a lot of rock structure, kind of like Gulfport Harbor does. And as you know, from Gulfport Harbor, which is a well-known place to catch big trout. They love it. And we have a lot of rocks. The water's not near as deep as Gulfport Harbor, but fish still hold to them. I mean, we catch trout, jacks, redfish, flounder, Spanish mackerel. Occasionally, you'll catch a mangrove you can keep, but if you fish with live baits when the water gets a little warmer, all you're gonna catch is mangrove snapper. <laughs> I thought his wade fishing techniques were helpful, but Captain Allen's methods to fishing the rocks were even more successful. The way the current rushes through the rocks, when you're fishing live bait, because the tide was out, if you just let your bait float through there, it hangs in the rocks. But if you throw a live shrimp, croaker, whatever you want to throw out, you just need to have it on a cork, let it sweep across the rocks with a slow reel to keep your bait off of the rocks. And a lot of times the trout will just hold in a pocket in them cuts and they'll come up and smash it. All in all, we had a great day out on the water. We caught plenty of trout, and I had a great time chasing dots with Captain Allen and look forward to getting out with him again. But maybe next time I'll stay in the boat away from the sharks. Hi, I'm David Crabtree, Executive Chef at Island View Casino here in Gulfport, Mississippi. Today we have trout on the menu. Uh, I love trout, it's one of my favorite inshore fish, uh, whether it's speckled trout, white trout, they're fun to catch. Uh, when we can get them throughout the season, we do them several different ways here at Island View in one of our 14 different restaurants. Um, today, I'm gonna do something from our dockside diner. Um, what we're gonna do is uh, season the fish on both sides. We're gonna blacken it. Pan's getting hot there. We're gonna turn it down just a little bit. We're gonna hit it with just enough oil to keep it from sticking. We're gonna lay that fish right inside that hot pan. You wanna hear it goes, you want it to talk to you when you add it to the pan. The salad that I'm gonna put it on is called our dockside salad and it's got some amazing ingredients in it. It's got a cilantro lime vinaigrette tossed in it. It's got oranges, pecans, uh, blue cheese, bacon. It's got wonderful things. Into the pan, we're gonna do a little bit of oranges, a little cilantro, which will give it a nice, fresh taste. Got some candied pecans, 
Got a little pickle beets. Bacon, everything's better with bacon. A little blue cheese. You only really want to turn your fish one time. Kind of move it around, make sure it's not sticking in the pan. The trout's a real neutral fish. You can do it uh, in, in any way you do it, it's not going to be wrong. It, it holds together real well with blackening. Um, I chose to blacken it today on top of our salad because I'm looking for something lighter, something to go with the, the summer feel, something refreshing. And the blackening spice on the trout goes with the, the flakiness of the trout and then that, that sweetness of the salad, it all comes together really well. We're going to do a little bit of uh, quick pickled onions. Onions have a real strong flavor, but if you pickle them for an hour, two hours, it, it really picks up. The, 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 uh, the heat cuts down and it becomes another, another type of, uh, that, than a raw onion. So we're going to put that in there. We worked on this salad for a couple months. Uh, Chef Calvin Light, Chef Jackie, uh, Jacob, and Chef Eric all worked together on this salad. It's one of my favorite salads that we're doing over there. We're gonna turn that fish. Oh yeah. Nice little crust on it. Should be cooked about halfway through at this point. And we've got our uh, cilantro lime vinaigrette dressing that we're going to toss our salad with. Typically one cup's enough. I like a lot of salad dressing on my salads. This is a great salad. It was a little complicated for the cooks to get everything down. It's got a lot of ingredients in it. Fish should be just about done. This will come out of the pan and go right on top of the salad. Just layer it over the salad. There we have our blackened speckled trout with our dock salad salad. <laughs>